countries are considering mixing COVID-19 vaccines for second doses or boosters. Now, this is due to supply delays which have slowed vaccination programs. The World Health Organization says this could be quite dangerous. So let's discuss this uh, with virologist Professor Barry Shu. Prof Shu, thank you for your time and uh, good morning to you. Uh, we're seeing this trend, you know, around the world where uh, this, it seems the mixing and matching of vaccines here due to delay to uh, provision, obviously, is counted as some of the reason. Is this safe to do so? Yes, good morning, Noella. Um, yeah, there, that is a bit of a question because basically the only mixture which has been evaluated and found to be both safe as well as very effective, in fact, uh, is the mixture where you start with AstraZeneca and you follow with a Pfizer boost. So first the primer of, of AstraZeneca and the boost with, with Pfizer. Interesting enough, you do the other way around. If you start with Pfizer and you boost with AstraZeneca, you in fact don't get a good effective response. Uh, it's, it doesn't have any safety problems, but you don't get a good immune response. And this is why the kind of mixture, one well, no, has to really evaluate it, evaluate it both for safety as well as for, as well as for efficacy. And unfortunately, the only mixture, as I said, that we've got data on, that we can be assured of its safety and efficacy, is AstraZeneca followed by, by Pfizer. And of course, we're not using AstraZeneca at the moment in the country. Yeah. So we don't have data as yet on Pfizer followed by Johnson 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 followed by Pfizer. Right. And and from my understanding, Prof, it seems uh, the reason why even you know certain countries are taking this practice on is because of delay in the supply of you know these uh, vaccine programs. Why are we seeing this global trend where it seems just the supply of vaccines is not matching at least targets and deadlines set by these different countries? Yeah, I think it's just simply global competition. You know, there's a limited amount that comes out the pipeline. And a lot of countries, of course, are scrambling for that limited supply of vaccines. So, you know, one, one, uh, one starts with a, one dose with one particular vaccine. You then need to kind of say, well, you know, what's going to follow with the second dose? And sometimes it's not the same vaccine that's available. I think it's global competition mainly. Yeah. When we, when we look at more of a South African context, we know that uh, uh, some people have taken their first doses, are still awaiting their second doses. What would your advice be then uh, to those getting their second dose Good morning, of morning, vaccine? How are you? Should they mix? Should okay. they not? Um, what would your medical advice be at this point? I, I think at the moment, and of course, I must preface all my remarks, that knowledge moves. And Lottie is moving very fast with regard to COVID. But as it says at the moment, I think stick to the Pfizer. In other words, you had your first dose of Pfizer, stick to getting the second dose of Pfizer. Certainly at this stage, don't try and get a second dose of Johnson & Johnson if your first dose was Pfizer. Johnson & Johnson, of course, at the moment is a one-dose vaccine, so it's not followed up by a second dose. So in this country, it's fairly simple. Um, the only two doses is Pfizer, and you should stick to Pfizer. Yeah. Uh, 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 Prof, I mean, even if you don't mix, you stick to, you know, the vaccine, as you mentioned, one vaccine, whether it's Johnson & Johnson or yeah. Pfizer, um, are there any other safety concerns uh, that we should all be uh, worried about? I mean, I'm sure you've seen uh, some of the testimonials coming up about people having headaches or seeing symptoms or even side effects. Mm. Uh, how can you alleviate some of those concerns that have already been raised by those who vaccinated? <laughs> Yeah, look, I think we need to uh, have you know, people, ex um, the, the one, one must expect that there will be some side effects in, a, I guess, about 10 to 20, uh, to 10 to 20 percent of people will have some side effects. They're usually very mild. Mm. It might be a tenderness of the arm or pain in the arm or feeling out of sorts or fluid the next day or a headache the next day. And I think that can be uh, alleviated with the common analgesics, the paracetamols and the aspirins and so on, if it's necessary. So you can do it's not going to affect the immune response and so on. So I, I think one you know, can just reassure that those side effects are due to, it's due to the fact that there are various chemicals which are liberated in the, in the body as part of the immune response. I must say that having mentioned that, mm -hmm. some people, of course, like myself, for example, didn't have any side effects whatsoever, nothing at all. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that yeah. you're not getting an immune response. It's just that some people are more sensitive to those those chemicals which are uh, which are liberated as part of the immune response, and some aren't. It's just a matter of individual sensitivities. That's all. Yeah. Nothing to worry about if you yeah. don't get side effects.
All right, then, Prof, we have to leave it there due to time, but thanks for uh, speaking to us. Uh, Professor uh, Barry Shub, just making sure uh, that we understand, uh, of course, uh, when you're taking a vaccine, when the 18-year-olds and above now can take uh, their vaccine, some of those concerns there uh, being alleviated.